what I want to do today is I want to convince you to use Evernote as part of your, you know, visual thinking practice. I, I'm going to share how I use it to clip, organize, search, and share my work. And I'd love it if you got started, you played around with it, and then perhaps you'll share some of the tips that you'll discover with me as well. There are a lot of interesting things that you can do with this, but Evernote is one of those tools where you really only appreciate the, the, the benefits once you start digging into it. So I'll give you a sneak preview of what it looks like when you've made it part of your workflow, and then you can check out the notes to see how you can get started. This is Evernote. Evernote is a, it's a really good tool for capturing and organizing notes. And your notes can be images, it can be uh, text, it can be web pages, it can be files, it can be audio. We'll talk about how to use it for visual thinking, but of course, as you dig into it, you'll find even more ways to use it. Now, when you're, when you're looking at visual thinking examples, whether you're interested in photography or illustration or data visualization or whatever, you probably find a lot of inspiration on the net. For example, I do a lot of sketch notes, so I love looking through Sketchnote Army to, for interesting ways that people have drawn things. If you install the Evernote Web Clipper, saving these things becomes ridiculously easy you, because you can either right-click and save the entire page, or you can pick a specific thing. Let's say, for example, the sketch note of, of students' notes in the First World War. You can right-click on that, say Evernote Web Clipper, and then clip that image. What this means is that instead of having a gazillion bookmarks or saving all these files to various folders in your hard drive and not being able to find things again, you can clip that. It shows up in your Evernote notebook. Let me, uh, let me show you where that, that turns up here. I'm going to go to the view in my inbox you'll see that that image has, has just appeared and it includes a link back to where you found it. So that way you, you can always go back to your sources. So this is really great for clipping interesting and inspiring things around the web. And you can organize things further as well. I keep an inspiration notebook in my Evernote and you'll probably want to do this as well. And here I can say, for example, I want to see all the ones that I've tagged as inspiring in terms of color. Uh, I tend to draw in black and white, so being able to look at how different people color their, their sketches uh, can inspire me right before I start drawing. So you can use it to start clipping things that you find useful, and you can use it to, or to organize things as well. Not only can you use Evernote to organize other people's sketches or, or images or drawings, you can also use it to organize your own. I've always struggled with this because I have files in folders and I want to stick them into different kinds of folder structures. Uh, I might file, I want, I want to file them by date, but I also want to file them by topic and collection and all of these things. So instead, if you use, uh, if you use Evernote, you can, sh you can, sh you can organize using tags. What that does, what that does, is it allows me, for example, to pull out all of the uh, panels that I've drawn. So if I'm, if I'm coordinating with an organizer of an event or conference, I can say, look, here are examples of my doing specifically the sort of thing that you're looking for. So Evernote is a great way to organize your own work. And the way that you do that is you simply import all of your images and then start categorizing them using tags. Even if you haven't organized them with tags, Evernote also gives you a way to search for stuff. And this is like a killer feature in Evernote that hardly any, well, not hardly anyone, a lot of people know about this, but I'm surprised that most people haven't come across it yet. So the nifty thing about Evernote is that it will search for text even within handwritten images, even within receipt scans, even within pictures of business cards. So for example, if I search, if I start searching for science, which is one of those things that I've recently drawn, well, you know, well, beginning of the year, uh, I can find this, uh, you know, I can find this text, my handwritten text highlighted in the image. So if you import all of your images or you add the, the things that inspire you on the web or you take pictures of things and you put it into Evernote, you can then search for that. It's not perfect, there are, you know, it, it it tends to be fairly liberal about what it searches. So if you search for something that looks almost like what's that, what's in the image, it'll find that. Um, but it's pretty darn good. And it helps me find things when I don't remember what's specifically in the title. So that's Evernote for search. And you can improve the search by adding keywords. 
for example, the the search here will only show that that will only come across the text. But I might want to say that here, that there, this is a drawing also of DNA, and it's a drawing of computers, and it's a drawing of uh, whatever that thing is. Or well, there's a wrench in there. And if you if you label your images with all these additional keywords, that makes it easier again to find things. Lastly, I want to I want to talk about how Evernote makes it easier to share. Share sharing you can keep your notebooks private, of course, but if you do want to share them, sharing is as easy as right-click share notebook, and then you can share your notebooks with selected people or with the world. I like sharing this uh, sketch notes uh, notebook publicly because that means anyone can get to it by going to a special URL. And when they go there, they can search my notebook. They can use the same kinds of tag searches and text searches that I do. And I can also send people links to searches within this notebook so that they can look at specific things. So, so you know, whether or not you're already currently sharing your, uh, your images through something like Flickr or your own blog, you might consider having a public Evernote notebook as well just for the search features. So that's a very quick demo of the interesting ways that Evernote, which is this free note-taking tool, there's, they've got a premium plan, which is definitely worth it, how Evernote can help you uh, as a visual thinker. And I would love to help people learn more about this, help, help, help you get started uh, and, um, and explore. So, uh, questions? Awesome. Yes, we have a couple already. Thank you All so right. much, Sasha, for your presentation. Uh, the first one is, what is the difference between tags and keywords? So I, I tend to use tags for overall categories, and you can use tags by, by specifying them up here. Uh, for example, I want to say that, uh, let's, let's pick something that I've, I've done recently. This, um, this talk, how to use Evernote, I'm going to click and add a tag of VTH, Visual Thinking Hub, so I can find anything related to VTH in the future. When you use a tag, that tag appears in that in the list of tags below. So that makes it easier to search for things. For example, if I click on Android Teal, I can immediately see the different tags that are there. Keywords, in, um, you might have other words that you don't want to include in this list because that list can get very long, but you want to be able to find it anyway. And I like adding text to my notes so, um, so that I can find things again. You'll see here that I've started using some keywords, but to make them even easier to search for, I've added a word that is not likely to be in any of my handwritten images. So if I want to search for, um, you know, word birthday, then I can find just the uh, just the notes with word colon birthday in them. So ta keywords are basically anything you want to add to it. Tags are a special kind of keyword that you add near the top over here uh, that give you additional search and, and organizational capabilities. Great. Uh, we have many more questions uh, coming in. Wonderful. The next one is, uh, good. Um, let's see. Do you write out the important words first, then combine everything together later on? Uh, I'm very casual with my with my words. Sometimes I'll you know I'll, I'll 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 save a lot of images and then I'll go back and I'll add some words. Sometimes when I'm searching for things, I I I think oh wait there was this other image that I wanted to find but I don't have it in this list. So then I'll go find that image and add that keyword or tag so that in the future I can find it more easily. So you don't have to have all of your tags and keywords sorted out at the beginning. You can add it as as you've learned more about how you want to find things. Um, oh, Charles has an oh. interesting ch uh, private message over there about uh, taking pictures of paper notebooks. That's another thing I should mention. If you've got a ton of paper notebooks, you can scan them all in, and then you can so you can save those scans in Evernote. Here's a here's an example of some of my notebooks from 2008. This is back when I was writing in script, so I realized printing your letters makes it easier for computers to understand them. But as you can see, this all this stuff now becomes available to me in my computer, and I. Can, because I'm a pro user, I can synchronize that and use it offline on my smartphone or my tablet. So related question to that, um, is it important to use the premium version of Evernote? No, 
I, I got along just fine with the free version until I completely fell in love with it. The main differences are that um, you, I, the, the premium version has a much bigger upload allowance. So give it a try, and then if you find yourself running out of space every, you know, every month, uh, then give, give the premium one a try. Uh, and uh, also I wanted to be able to look up my notes when I was in the subway, which is completely, you know, first world problem, right? But um, Evernote <laughs> lets you do uh, offline synchronization if you're a pro user. Uh, the next one is, have you done any handwritten notes in Evernote through a third-party application or a, or a Evernote Moleskine? Uh, oh, that, it's great that you mentioned that because Evernote actually does have a, you know, has, has partnered with Moleskine to have a special notebook with a grid and stickers. I've never actually used it because I do practically all of my notes on this tablet PC. Uh, I like it because I can, you know, draw and erase and all that other cool stuff. But other people have tried the notebooks and they're pretty happy with it. So that's all cool. Uh, Evernote also has a built-in kind of image annotation drawing thing called Sketch. So you can use Sketch on your smartphone or your tablet. You can also use it on the desktop to quickly add a note to a screenshot or something like that. Uh, I tend to use Autodesk Sketchbook Pro because I really like it for drawing. But then afterwards, I save all the images and I stick them into Evernote anyway. Okay, I could. I, I tried Sketch. I personally did, did not like it, especially for the uh, the handwriting. For some yeah, it's, reason, it's not really respond. you know it's 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 mainly there so you can draw circles and screenshots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's also Jing. Um, don't remember who did that, but uh, Jing um, uploads screenshots and or video captures uh, online, and you just have to share the icon. Mm-hmm. Charles okay. had uh, another question. question. So go ahead. Go ahead. Yep. Uh, what books do you suggest to read for reference? Uh, there are actually quite a few Evernote books, so I can't really say that, you know, I, I can't really recommend one because uh, A, there are plenty, and B, I kind of just learned it by poking around with the software. But um, but go ahead and explore. Maybe that could be a good idea of a blog post. That could be. I have books. a really good library near me. I will go look at lots of books. Good. Evernote helps us catalog, index, and find, okay, that's not a complete question. Oh, okay. That was just a comment. Evernote helps us catalog, index, and find. Uh, next question. I assume tags can be added anytime, yep. such as after a web clip or some date in the future. Absolutely. I actually tend to do all of my, you know, I tend to do my tagging in bursts. So I'll, I'll stick a whole bunch in them and rely on search for a while. And then afterwards, I'm like, okay, you know, I feel it like spending a little time organizing things. But, you know, a lot of people, you know, will stick things into their, their Evernote notebooks without any filing whatsoever, and they're doing just fine. So even if you never use tags, or you, if you decide to use tags, um, if you decide to tag and organize your stuff on some lazy Sunday afternoon, that is totally all right. Excellent. Um, someone would like to know more about the naming conventions for the notes? Uh, I, I basically have none. <laughs> I, I tend to use, uh, I tend to use, so these are imported from files, and so they take the file name from it. I, I like using uh, year, month, day, uh, event, title, speaker in my, in my uh, notes so that, uh, so that I, can, I can search for them by file name or by title later on. But when you've imported it into Evernote, you can also change the, uh, the dates if the dates are incorrect. So if you've imported something and you want to change the, the date that it's on, you can just click on the create a date to do that. You can also change the title if you want to. So if you want to make it clearer, you just change it to, uh, to reflect what you'd like it filed as. So what about uh, copyrights on images? Uh, if you're sharing your notebook, you probably want to make sure that you've got the copyright or the, the permission to do any of that sort of stuff. Uh, because after all, it's, you know, you don't really want to like clip all these interesting things by other people and then share that with the world without some kind of like attribution or, or proper uh, copyright things. For personal use, right. it seems to be fine personal, you know, uh, personal study and all that. So I, I completely feel not guilty about clipping lots of people's interesting things and sticking them into my visual dictionary, for example. Visual, di uh, sorry, this visual dictionary thing is a great idea. Um, basically, the idea is that you can clip lots of people's uh, images, pick sections of them, and then start organizing them so that you can say, oh, how do I draw Twitter? And look at all these different ways that people have drawn Twitter. So another thing that you can use Evernote for. Right, okay. 
Uh, last question that we have here is, what do you use for scan, uh, to scan for the camera smartphone scanner? Um, I actually just use a camera program called Camera Zoom FX. There are a couple of ones that are specifically for, you know, Evernote or whatever. Uh, in, in fact, Evernote, if you install the widget, even has a camera icon that you can just click, uh, tap, and then, uh, and then it'll take the picture for you and stick it into a note and everything. But because I'm an Android, practically all the camera applications I use will also have a send to and then Evernote sort of feature. Um, I have a question about your visual dictionary. Is mm -hmm. that something that you're sharing or nope. is that something just for yourself? Going back to the, uh, the thing about other people's copyright stuff. Right. To make it easier, I just use it as a resource for myself. Uh, and I completely encourage other people to build up something like this on their own as well. Because once you start looking at other people's drawings and, and breaking down the component elements, it's actually really interesting to see, for example, how different people draw time or other things like that. Time, time, time. Oh, yes. So time, for example. Yes. Time. And then you can merge all of them in one go. Time, merge. See? That's how easy it is. Hmm. Okay. And uh, someone suggested a, a website for free manuals called makeuseof.com. Did you know that one? They have great, they have great instructions. I think that's one that I sometimes check out. Anyway, yes, check that out. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much for the questions. I think uh, that's all the time we have for uh, Sasha's. Uh, for sure, I'll answer the rest in the chat and in a follow-up blog yeah. post. Thanks for listening, and I hope you give it a try.